This is your midweek Barbados Today evening news update for Wednesday, January 26th. The freshly installed Barbados government immediately got down to business today, pledging to keep democracy alive while serving the interests of all Barbadians. Ministers and government senators were sworn into office by President Dame Sandra Mason this morning at State House. There was one addition to the cabinet, former housing minister Dr. William Dugid. I have now invited Dr. William Dugid to serve as senior minister in the office of the prime minister with specific responsibilities for coordinating all infrastructure projects. Dr. Dugid, we welcome you to the cabinet. He will also have day-to-day -day responsibility on all tongue planning matters on my behalf. Prime Minister Mia Motley pointed out that her 19-member cabinet, down from 24 ministers last year, will see the newly appointed senior ministers taking the lead on delivering government's key objectives. We have chosen to break new ground in the breaking of a smaller cabinet, but in the sharing of the burden, for as you know, I truly believe that many hands make light work. It is against that backdrop, therefore, that I welcome the four senior coordinating ministers and the Deputy Prime Minister to carry the burden of what will come, I believe, to be regarded as one of the largest and most difficult challenges facing any post-independent government in this country. We know that growth must continue to be the first order of business. And to that extent, therefore, the choice of Dr. Dugid in being able to come to work every day to help government's capital programs move is absolutely critical. Reiterating her administration's intention to enhance governance, the Prime Minister again extended the offer of two Senate places to the Democratic Labour Party, which failed to secure any seats in the election. Victory must never allow us to believe that it is a license to obliterate those for whom others voted. This is who we were raised to be as Barbadians. And I trust and pray that on this occasion, the officers and members of the Democratic Labour Party will recognize that this is not a political trick, that this is a genuine desire to keep our multi-party democracy alive in spite of the mandate given to the Barbados Labour Party government. On the heels of the installation of the new government, the central bank today delivered an upbeat report on the economy. In his review of last year's performance, Governor Cleverson Haynes reported modest growth in 2021, driven mainly by a rebound in tourist arrivals. The economy registered mild growth in 2021, as new waves of infections at home and abroad slowed the recovery of the tourism sector and kept output well below pre-pandemic levels. However, for the third consecutive quarter, economic activity registered an upturn from the sharp decline the previous year. Preliminary data suggests that the fourth quarter on quarter recovery of 11.5% enabled economic activity to rise by 1.4% for 2021. The modest growth for the year was reflected in higher private sector spending, but the continued depressing effect of COVID-19 on the tourism sector and on private sector investment tempered the extent of the recovery. The revival of the tourism sector strengthened during the last quarter of 2021. long stay tourist arrivals in December were at their post-COVID peak, reaching 47% of the corresponding pre-pandemic level of 2019, as the relaxation of global travel restrictions, the phase reduction in health protocols, and pent-up demand contributed to a rebound in international travel. The steep fall in arrivals in the first quarter following the 2020 end-of-year spike in domestic COVID-19 infections, however, outweighed the gradual improved performance over the last three quarters and contributed to an overall decline for the year of 26%. Governor Haynes is expecting a major pickup in economic activity this year, but he noted this is dependent on external shocks, including the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The outlook for the tourism sector looks more favorable now than it did a year ago, with the increased availability of vaccines and the reopening of economies to international travel and business activity. However, there still exists significant downside risks to travel occasioned by the potential for the emergence of newer strains of the virus and the re-imposition of travel restrictions in key source markets. Given the more favorable outlook, 
the bank anticipates that the improvement in economic activity witnessed over the last nine months will accelerate in 2022. This should be driven in part by the continued revival of tourism. All indicators are for a strong, though partial, recovery in the first quarter, aided by the favorable impact of the influx of visitors for the English cricket tours, the expansion of airlift into the country, and the positive benefits of enhancements to the tourism plan. In addition, the bank is encouraged that some of the delayed medium to large scale tourism development projects will get on the way in 2022. The timing of the commencement of these investments, along with the ongoing upgrades by government to the infrastructure, including for roadworks and housing and other small scale private sector investments, should provide a further boost to the revival in economic activity. Now for today's COVID-19 update, 723 people, 343 males and 380 females tested positive for the viral illness on Tuesday from the 2,880 tests conducted by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases comprise 125 persons under the age of 18 and 598 who were 18 years and older. There were 120 people in isolation facilities, while 7,883 were in home isolation. The death toll remains at 277. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I am a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental, so at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic, and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses, and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, a Jamaican psychiatrist warns government that crime is taking a toll on citizens. Dr. Earl Wright says government must act quickly before the situation worsens. 25 days into 2022 and already over 100 people have been murdered. Weighing in on the psychological impact of crime, consultant psychiatrist Dr. Earl Wright says the situation is of concern, especially given that more Jamaicans are suffering from anxiety and depression. There isn't a study that's been done on it, but I'm sure that that's going to be proven right in the long run, that the number of individuals that are anxious, the number of individuals that are not sleeping as well, not eating well, not producing as much as they used to produce, and that the learning output of children is will be affected by the lack of security. Dr. Wright says the situation has been made worse with the COVID-19 pandemic. The long-term impact this will likely have on children is also cause for worry. It will be severe if it's not taken care of soon because children, their brain are most, they incorporate most between zero and five. So if you have a long period, especially the zero to three, when they don't feel safe, their parents don't feel safe. And if a parent don't feel safe, the children pick it up immediately. The psychiatrist says the authorities must do all they can to ensure that people feel safe and secure in order to function effectively before the situation worsens. On the international front, the coronavirus pandemic is putting a bigger dent into the world's economy than expected, with the International Monetary Fund slashing its worldwide growth forecast. It cited the spread of the Omicron variant, higher energy prices, an uptick in inflation, and a deteriorating outlook for the world's two biggest economies, the United States and China. Just a few months ago, the International Monetary Fund predicted the global economy would flourish in 2022. But now the IMF has a different outlook, thanks to inflation not seen in decades. 
IMF economists said inflation is the result of pretty much everything going wrong at the end of 2021. The Omicron surge, sickening hundreds of millions of workers worldwide. The resulting production cuts in everything from oil and gas to consumer goods to fresh and packaged foods. Visitors to this food bank in Washington, D.C. say rising prices are harming their families. It's really impacting my family tremendously because if not, I wouldn't be here, you know. And, and, and in order for the organization to help us, that's, that's like, uh, that's a blessing. It's barely nothing in the stores to shop with. And then there's the ongoing global supply chain disruptions, likely to be around well into 2022. The only way to reverse inflation, says the IMF, raise interest rates. Monetary policy is at a critical juncture in most countries, where inflation is broad-based alongside a strong recovery, like in the United States. Or high inflation runs the risk of becoming entrenched, as in some emerging market and developing economies and advanced economies, extraordinary monetary policy support should be withdrawn. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.